and the servants of God and the handmaidens of God. Everyone, whoever who are true disciples and servants of God, they will get to eat this scroll. Then you will prophesy. These are wonderful things that are kept in reserve for the end times. These are the mysteries that will be revealed just like how Moses received the Ten Commandments. You will receive these mysteries from God and then you will proclaim. So one side, this is happening. On another side, the very people of God who came out of Egypt have begun to play church. They made a cough for themselves. Oh, you know, if you look at this passage of scripture, if we can forgive them, that is not too bad. But what we cannot forgive them is this. They said it was this cough that led them from bondage to deliverance. That is totally unacceptable. That's where they made the greatest mistake, you know. Okay, it's okay if they are going to bow down and worship because... They've been doing that for 400 years, bowing down to all these idols of Egypt. That's okay. But when they have seen with their own two eyes the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud that had led them out of bondage, how can they say it's not the God but this God? That is gross sin. That was what made Moses very angry. And that's what he finally asked them a question. Who is on the Lord's side? Come on the right. And you will be surprised and shocked as I was when I read the passage. A large number of people chose not to stand on the right side, right? You read the passage. Thousands of them died that day. It's very sad, you know, having seen the awesome display of the power and the glory of God face to face, and yet to deny all that. But we, the church, are in a greater sin than the Israelites. They saw, but we have it within us. That's the difference, you know. They only saw with their eyes the works of God. But you, we have within us the redemptive work of God. And to deny it will be the unpardonable sin. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded. So the last days church of God, the last days ministries of God, the last days people of God will do exactly what the Lord tells them to do. Nothing more, nothing less. No ifs, no buts. And you don't substitute your own interpretation in it. Oh, what if it's not a donkey, why not a cow? If the Lord says a donkey, it must be a donkey. You don't substitute your own interpretation. No, I think it means this. It doesn't mean that. You don't interpret. You don't say, I think. My question is, did you really seek the Holy Spirit for an interpretation? Don't just go by the books and look at the book of interpretation, you know. And say, oh, that's what it means. No, that's not what it means. Amen. Let me give you an example. I've said this many, many times. A thief. What is the interpretation of a thief? The devil comes like a thief, period. So if you see a thief in your dream, it means the devil is going to come. But the Bible also says the Lord comes like a thief. Now you tell me, which thief is this thief that you saw in your dream? Is it the devil or the Lord? If you think it's the devil, then the Lord will come like a thief and take your garment away. 
because you are so blinded looking out for the devil when the lord came and he was knocking and knocking and knocking and knocking and you are so deaf and dumb not to listen to him knocking on the door and you did not rise up to go to open the door you did not rise up to go and minister to him because you thought it was the devil knocking on the door because you read in the book of interpretation thief means the devil <laughs> come on throw those books away bend your knees and ask the holy spirit whatever dreams if you dream a dream from god only god can give you that interpretation that's why i refrain from uh, writing books like that you know because a dream though there may be some specifics even in the word sometimes a dream is tailor made for each individual and there cannot be a standard interpretation because god speaks specifically to you based on your cultural understanding your spiritual understanding and even your natural understanding god speaks to you in a manner in which you will understand according to how you understand like let me give you an example several months ago i saw a vision in this vision i saw two of my staff and one of them and uh, one was a male the other was a female and um to make a long story short i pondered much over the meaning of the vision and then i asked the holy spirit what does this really mean because one was seemed to be doing good the other was seemed to be doing bad but both of them are loyal faithful uh, ministers in our ministry for many many years then i was wondering why this particular man that i saw in that vision and then the holy spirit made me to understand that the person there in that vision signified to me the one aspect of the ministry that we are doing the involvement of the other person will cause a damage to the ministry because the other person is not called to be part of this thing the person is called for some other work if you are not called to be a driver of a car you should not assume to be the driver just because you know how to drive does not mean you should get into the car and drive it it's a big mistake if you are not called to do a certain work though in the natural you may feel that you know how to do it i am an excellent driver you know i drive all kinds of fast cars in my dreams <laughs> for a moment you guys were taken away huh i drive so well even james bond will envy me <laughs> but in the natural i've never even driven any car not even a motorbike motorcycle you know the only vehicle that i have ever driven is a bicycle so just because i can drive so well in my dreams <laughs> and i i know the, the theory of it i should not get behind the wheels and i may just drive all of you to heaven <laughs> it is dangerous we should be in the place of our call whether it is small or big that does not matter if god made you number 2 or number 3 why should you strive to be number 1 see a true disciple is a follower of christ and look at verse 6 it says and the disciples went and did as jesus commanded that is a disciple 
they will do what the Lord commands. They will not impose their own will, their own purposes. And they brought the ass and the colt and put on them their clothes. And they set him thereon. Now who told them to put clothes on the donkey? Number one. Number two. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them in the way. Now who told them to do all this? That this is the protocol. Now who told them that? Someone must have told them, isn't it? Someone definitely must have told them this is the protocol. Do it this way. A protocol for welcoming a king comes from the kingdom. It's the kingdom that dictates the protocol. So it's the disciples told by the Lord how he should be received. So they told them, okay, now spread the garments. This is the way to receive the king. Because the Lord is not just an ordinary prophet who is coming from Nazareth. He is the king coming into his city. And that is protocol. So it's the Lord who told them the order of how the work should be done. So in the last days, it is the Lord Jesus Christ who will give us the command how the work needs to be done. The manner in which the clothes need to be spread out, the manner in which the olive branches to be cut, some were waving, some were put on the floor. See, these are all protocols. Order. Order of service. Which brings us to another question that we cannot follow an established pattern of ministry that we have been doing for ages of time in the last days. Old methods cannot be applied. No. Old method of child evangelism, old method of youth evangelism, old method of general evangelism, old methods of church administration, church government, will no more apply in these last days. Because the kingdom of God comes to rule. If you want the Lord Jesus to be king in your church, to be king in your life, to be king in your ministry, if you want to bear him on your back like a donkey, then we better throw away all our old methods and be willing to say, Lord, what would you have me do? What would you want? Let me give you a clue to this. Nearer to the Passover, see, still this even happens on the last week of the Lord's life. The disciples ask him a question. Where would you like for us to prepare a room for you to have your Passover? See, they went and asked the Lord this question. Where would you like for us? What would you like for us to do? How would you like for us to prepare? And then the Lord told him, go into such and such a city, into such and such a street, and there you will find a large room made ready. Somehow that owner was expecting a guest. He was moved by the Spirit to make his large living room ready for a very important guest to come. The Lord specifically told them which house he wanted, which room he wanted, which place. So the last day's ministry must totally be yielded to God 100% and must be directed by God 100%.
no methods of men and most importantly all the old methods must be thrown into the waste paper basket brought to the trash and the multitudes that went before and that followed now look at that scripture this is very strange there were two groups one that went before the lord and one went behind him so two groups of people in the last days ministry one will be the leaders one will be the followers not everybody is a leader there are many many people who are called to be supporting ministries assistant pastors assistant worship leaders assistant this assistant that assistants are a very very important people amen? amen you can't live without them i rely a lot on my personal assistant a big six footer so whenever anybody wants to contact me i give him his number he sticks with me like a shadow nice wonderful brother every morning when he gets up he'll call me in the morning to remind me of all my appointments even when i'm coming to the yes he will say sir don't forget this 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 one he'll need now everything sir please pack your bag sir this sir that all these things wonderful brother however he does not have the gift to be a leader i have tested him you know put him in positions of leadership he made a mess and then i realized his gifting is more in being like a number 2 person or a number 3 person rather than a number 1 person he functions so beautifully as a number 2 person but he makes a mess as a number 1 person so many people are called to be followers behind there are, there are, will be two groups of people if you are called to be behind don't fight to be in front you'll make a shipwreck you'll break apart now let's come back to the vision i told you earlier in line with this what i just shared with you in this vision i saw two of my staff one person is an administrator the other person is an administrator of media the other person was an administrator of administration so we were at a at somewhere in a road side and i was waiting for my car to be brought out from the parking lot so this administrator of media was standing beside me so i told him go and get the car and before he could go the other person the administrator of administration said no i will go and get the car i said okay why not both of them knows how to drive so the administrator of administration pulled the car out of the parking lot but it came off the edge and fell off the edge and then but still she was trying to control the car i could see her face very clearly there was determination i can do it but first failure it went off the ledge and it was falling over but the car did not topple over then she tried to stir the car to a different direction and she backed the car and it hit on a huge 18 foot 18 wheel truck it hit yet she would not give up she still had the determination by this time the back portion of the car was damaged and i was standing there by the edge of the road looking at this entire drama so oh my god my car <laughs> but all the while i saw the determination on the staff's face she was like determined yes i can do it i can do it i will try i will try then the holy spirit the lord standing by my side said the media administrator he is supposed to drive the car not this other person if this other person drives they will make a mess because that is not what 
that person is called for. That is this person's job. When it comes to media, he is to be your number two man, not the other person. So that was the understanding the Holy Spirit gave me from that vision. What we are called for, as much as we like to do many things, we must be satisfied. That takes a lot of dying to self, you know, dying to pride. But let me tell you one thing. Whether you are number two or number three or even the number one millionth, it doesn't make the number one person any greater than the number millionth person. What matters most in the eyes of God is obeying the commandments of God. You do what God tells you to do, you get the same reward as the number one person. You can be the millionth person. But the number one person can make a mess and lose everything. But if you obey, you can get great rewards. How many of you have read the book Final Quest? Their brother Rick Joyner shares a powerful vision that he saw in heaven about a man called Angelo. You remember reading that? The man Angelo was a beggar. He, he does not have a home. He sleeps on the streets. But that man is in a kingly position up in heaven. And you know how many thousands and hundreds and millions of souls he saved for the Lord Jesus? One or two? Are you sure one? Only one. Shocking, isn't it? Whether one or million, it is obeying the call. The Lord told Angelo, go and save that one. And on top of that, Angelo died a martyr. He not only saved someone, he also loved not his life unto death. That is the ultimate love for God. That is the greatest service, you know, not being number one. That is not. Do you love someone more than you love your own life? That you're willing to give up your own life so that another person will leave. When Angelo took off his warm clothes and gave to the other poor beggar, he knew he, was, he will die. Isn't it? He knew he would die because both of them are freezing. But he made a choice. He said, let him live. Let him live. What a great love. That is the true Christ love that constrains your heart. Do you have that love? The true Christ love does not seek its own. It does not call attention to itself. It's not me thing, my thing, I thing. That is the kingdom of the devil. Me thing, I thing, my thing. Unfortunately, the Western society thinks like that. Me, my, I. Self-centered society. The good news is, the Easterners are catching up with you. Thanks to all the propaganda that comes from Hollywood, you know. They are slowly evolving to that same self-centered culture. Me, I, mine. We must discard all that and say, we, we, ours, the kingdom of God. It's not what you do or I do that matters. It's what we collectively do for the establishment of the kingdom of God on this earth. Paving the way, preparing the way for the kingdom of God to come to reign on this earth. That should be our uttermost concern than anything else.
and the multitudes that went before and that followed cried saying hosanna to the son of david blessed is he that cometh in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest now come back to my next question who taught them to say all this how could the people just simply look at the lord on the donkey and say hosanna to the son of david they cannot just simply say right somebody must have told, told them all that now if you uh, compare this with the gospel of mark now please put a hand on matthew and turn to mark chapter 11 you see completely what the people said mark chapter 11 verses 9 and 10 and they that went before and they that followed cried saying hosanna blessed is he that cometh in the name of the lord blessed be the kingdom of our father david that cometh in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest how in the world did the people know to proclaim that the kingdom of god has come in the form of the lord jesus how did they know if they were not told this is in the manner this is the manner in which you shall praise this is the manner in which you shall worship and welcome the king into the great city they must have been told right that is the pattern you see there they proclaim the coming of the kingdom of god this is what the end time church end time ministry must do proclaiming the coming of the kingdom of god that is you and i our responsibility is to proclaim the coming of the kingdom of god that should be the central focus of our worship singing the joyful praises of the coming of the kingdom of god is not to sing songs to just bless me see another subtlety of the devil that has come into our churches the bless me songs that make me feel good songs come on throw away all that of course those are good but that is not to be part of the worshiping the king you know only the king should be adored and revered and honored and worshiped you don't come before the king said bless me king bless me king no you don't even say bless me king said i want to be good i want to be good well the king is seated there with great honor you don't say that right see we should change our pattern of worship must change that it is truly kingdom centered where the king the great king is truly honored he is truly recognized the due honor is given to the king and the disciples taught them how the people should worship the king when he comes into the temple so the church god will raise up true psalmists to true prophetic psalmists who will bring prophetic songs true prophetic songs from the spirit of god that will worship the king not just simply songs to make you feel good but they are also necessary you know and they have up their place but not when it comes to worshiping the king when you are coming to worship the king you worship the king with songs of praise and glory only extolling the king not an individual now we go down the list look at verse 15 the lord comes into the temple he cleanses the temple great mighty works takes place and when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did and the children crying in the temple and saying hosanna to the son of david they were very displeased why would the chief priests 
get so upset because some little kids are singing praises to God. Why? Mysteries of the universe. Now look at what happens next. And they said unto him, Hearest thou not what they say? And Jesus said unto them, Yea, have you never read? Out of the mouth of babies and sucklings, thou hast perfected praise. The Lord is here quoting Psalms 8 verse 2. Now please look at the two categories of children that are mentioned in the scripture. Babies and sucklings. I made a deep research into those words because this is now the new call that the Lord has given to me. He said all so far, when it comes to children's ministry, they've all been centered on older children. Not many or much ministry have ever been focused on the babies and sucklings. Sucklings are those babies that drink milk from their mother's breast. The age group of 0 to 3. And the babies are in the age group of 3 to 5. The neglected group. And the Lord told me last year, He said, now I want you to focus on these two groups because they are now going to rise up their time is going to come very soon. We need to prepare our children. Our Sunday school ministry, our children's ministry must now focus to preparing these two age group, 0 to 3, 3 to 5. You know, when the Lord gave me this call, I spent many, many nights, several hours every night, browsing through the internet, looking at all the children's ministries that are out there in the world. Many, many good ministries there are with many, many wonderful curriculums. But what greatly saddened me the most was none of them ever mentioned a single word about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ to the children. None. This was my sad discovery my disappointed discovery, none of them mention a single word about the coming of the Lord to children. I was almost broken to tears, you know. And I took it up before the Lord in prayer. He said, Lord, how am I going to do this work if there are no materials available? And then the Lord spoke to me. He said, you are the forerunner, like John the Baptist, to raise up these children. Prepare all end-time materials. What the Lord has trained me for 30 years. Now to prepare materials for the age group of 0 to 3 and 3 to 5. And make them available for the entire larger body of Christ, so that they can all use these materials to prepare the next generation for the coming of the Lord. You know, if you look at this scripture, now please turn with me to Psalms chapter 8, verse 2. You will be astonished to read what, how God is going to use the children and the babies in the last days. I pondered very much, you know, zero to three, sucking milk from the mother's breast. How can they be used to preach? What can they do? They are just babbling, right? They babble, don't they? Babies, you know, they just babble. They could hardly say even mommy or daddy. And then three to five, okay, three to five, at least they can talk something, right? That's okay, you know, three to five is okay. What about zero to three? But now look at verse eight, chapter eight, verse two. Out of the mouth of babies and sucklings, 
hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger which means these babies in whatever garbage babblings or whatever they say there is going to be a power in their words there's going to be a power god is going to put a prophetic power on all the babies and upon all the children so that when they open their mouth to even say ba 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 the enemy is going to be put to flight come on i don't understand how that's going to work but that doesn't matter why should we understand right now look at, now come back to matthew come back to matthew and look at verse chapter 21 and look at verse 15 this will prove that what i just said earlier and when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did and the children crying the babies crying when the babies cry how does god hear praise right that's what the lord jesus said have you never read out of the mouth of babies and sucklings thou has perfected praise which means even when the baby they cry because that's the language they know there is praise and power in their crying amen, amen. and awesome anointing is going to come upon the little ones so get ready church prepare the children for the outpouring of the spirit that is the responsibility of the church 0 to 3 and 3 to 5 that group is been neglected by the entire larger body of christ our larger ministry has been targeted towards those who are older most ministries older than 5 6 and above but the 5 and below have been neglected or they have been committed to the nursery and they lie in the crib do nothing and the parents listen to a speaker in the nursery room and the parents are just enjoying the message while the babies are just left by themselves you know this is the 30th year of me serving the lord in full time ministry 6 months ago when the lord first spoke to me about his children's ministry i really told the lord no the lord must have picked the wrong person to do this job and so i went and i almost literally cried to the lord lord i don't know anything about babies and my attention span with children are very short lived you know a few minutes that's all you make the baby play giggly baby wonderful baby <laughs> after some time you get tired of all this giggly baby wonderful baby <laughs> and you want to walk away i don't know about you but that's what i did and then when the lord said now this is what i want you to do say what in the world am i going to say i can't say giggly baby wonderful baby what are you going to do baby <laughs> see you when this scripture was pointed out to me there's look at the scripture the lord said this is going to come to pass upon the children the babies and the sucklings which means in our language it will mean the babies and the thoughtless right 3 to 5 are thoughtless right am i right thoughtless and the babies that group this two group you know when the lord spoke to me he appeared to me in a vision and he said this is what i want you to do and then he thrust into me that burden of 
for that. And ever since that burden came into me, like a heavy weight inside me, I spent many sleepless nights, you know. My every waking moment is consumed with just one passion, to evangelize, uh, to prepare these two age group children for the coming of the Lord. Every moment when I'm awake, I'm just thinking, now how to do this, how to do that. And I think of all ways and means how to bring the end time message to the children. When I look at a toy, I will see a vision, you know, how this toy or even a dollhouse or a playhouse can be used like a teaching aid for children. So recently, I was praying, Lord, how can I just go and tell the little babies, baby, smiley baby, <laughs> or even little children, you know, how am I, Lord, going to just tell them, you know, the Lord is coming, this and that, and then we have so many works to do, and so many programs, TV programs to produce, I said, Lord, I need many, many helpers. If we can get children to reach out to children, it will be better, isn't it? The children can speak their own lingo, right? <laughs> you and I don't know the children's lingo, do you? No. So I began praying. I said, Lord, please show me how to do. Then the Lord showed, gave me a strategy. He said, organize a children's storytelling competition. And I will bring my choice children to that competition. And there you will pick up all those whom I have sent. And the Lord showed me the signs to look for. So just two weeks ago, we organized a two-day storytelling competition for the age group. 3 to 12. So 79 children registered. Out of the 79, I handpicked 40 who are excellent communicators. There were three three-year-olds who could preach a storm. They were better than me many times. Everybody is better than me. They were so marvelous, you know. So I have now 40 helpers who are, whom I'm going to train to, with a, with a well-planned script to act out in our TV programs, children reaching children. Amen. Not just children reaching children, but children will also reach to the adults. This is the plan that the Lord gave me, and this is also the plan for Shekinah. Focus on the children. Zero to three, and three to five. If you are from out of state, spread this message across. The time has come for the glory of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is going to come and fall upon the babies and the thoughtless. Because these are the neglected group. And upon their mouth, God is going to perfect praise. They're going to sing forth glory. And when they sing, the particular miracle that will take place is Satan will be put to flight. It will break the bondage of Satan. The powers of the enemy, the accuser, the avenger, his power will be broken and will put them to flight. And I wondered, you know, why specifically God is going to use the babies? Just a few days before I left for the U.S., I asked the Lord this question. Why the babies, Lord? And why particularly he has got to do with putting the enemy to the flight? Do you remember what happened to all the babies when baby Moses was born? And do you remember what happened to all the little children two years and below when the Lord Jesus was born? 
This is God's payback time. Amen. Payback time using the very children that the devil killed and putting him to shame. Amen. Amen. Only God can think of such strategy, you know. <laughs> the very children that he killed is going to use them to put into shame and put into flight. So, we must pray and seek the Lord how to train our children to be in the center of God's will. You must seek the Lord. If there are children's ministers here, you must seek the Lord. Lord, teach me. Give me your plans. Give me your ideas. How to reach out to the children. I have been praying this prayer for the last six months. And the Lord has been giving me many, many ideas to produce TV programs. See, you have a church. And God has given me a, a, the medium, television that we can reach the whole world. And the Lord told me, what have I given to you? I've given to you a television. Use this medium to produce programs to reach out to these people, to this age group. Babies and toddlers. So we have designed programs or are designing 0 to 3, 3 to 5, 6 to 8, and 9 to 12. These various age groups. We are, we are producing many, many different kinds of programs, not only in the Indian language, but in the English language, because English is spoken all over the world. So we are preparing those programs, and we are going to telecast all these programs on our network, so you can... Angel TV is now available in the U.S. So I will make some announcements about this tomorrow, and how you can have access to it, so that you can have it right in your home, have your children watch them, or have it in your church, train all your children's ministers, that, and you have a curriculum of programs right from the throne of God. Amen? Let us stand up for a word of prayer. Tomorrow will be part two of the larger message of what God's word for Shekinah is. to you all about the children. When the little children, babies at the time of Moses and toddlers at the time of the Lord Jesus, when they died, they were killed, right? But not for themselves. They were killed because of a deliverer. So which me meant they died as martyrs. The Lord considers them as martyrs, the baby martyrs. So in the end times, I do not know why, but this is God's government. There needs to be a company of this age group martyrs. God needs them. You know, 
last year i was preaching at a, a fasting prayer meeting for a dear friend of mine and when i was leading in prayer the holy spirit told me to give an altar call for those who would like to dedicate themselves as a martyr so i i gave the age group of 13 youths 13 of 15 to 29 so about 700 people young people stood up to make themselves available to the lord while i was praying my spiritual eyes were open and i saw a little angel the height of just maybe it looked like an earthly age of about 3 to 5 maybe no not 3 to 5 maybe 4 to 6 just about this height dressed like a roman warrior and with a one foot sword in his hand and was just walking up and down the front section where all the people were gathered and this angel looked at me and he said you know you said that those who are in the age group of 13 and above to offer themselves martyrs there are two person in this meeting who are 8 years old and they are praying lord what about us we want to offer ourselves as martyrs please tell them god also receives them so when i spoke the word two little boys jump up to their feet and they shout praise the lord yes lord we want to be a martyr and both of them both of them were 8 year olds and i saw this little baby martyr it's a martyr saint you know for from ancient of times there have always been children who have been killed like in communist russia and in communist china you know many years ago i was conducting a youth camp meeting in tibet and uh, on the last day i was encouraging the tibetan youths to pray for the salvation of china you know the tibetans they they would not want to pray for the salvation of china they all remain stubbornly quiet i was wondering why they were quiet maybe they didn't understand my british accent <laughs> so i told my interpreter okay i'm going to say it very softly and slowly so that you can interpret it correctly and no matter how simple i make it as simple as a ginda gardener could understand none of the tibetans who are in their 20s would open their mouth and pray for the salvation of china so finally i went up to a young lady who's like the senior among them who speaks very good english i ask her tell me my dear daughter why is it that you all don't want to pray is it that you all don't understand they said no we will never pray for the salvation of china because china took our country and we are very angry and bitter against them this was their hatred in their heart you know because china took tibet in 1959 so while this was going on so i was pondering lord how am i going to break this hatred in their heart at that moment i heard the holy spirit say turn your eyes outwards and look so we were inside a tent when i looked out i saw this was about 9ish at night and it was raining and icy cold all around the mountains in tibet and i saw we were in a very secret location you don't want the communists to know what you're doing there you know 50 saints from heaven standing there in the field 25 couples and they were standing all the males in one line and all the females on one line and they were all chinese and i asked the lord who are these the lord told me these are the martyred saints and he said here what they are praying and i heard them you know they all lifted up their hands to the throne of god tears running down their eyes they prayed so fervently for the salvation of tibet and they prayed lord please forgive us for taking over tibet and they went on confessing their sins of the land and praying for the salvation of tibet 
And while this was going on, I saw a small boy, about five years old, holding his mother's skirt, standing beside her. And I wondered, okay, if all these 50 people are martyrs, what about the little boy? Why is he among them? Because martyrs have special privileges in heaven. They, have, they live in a different place, not common to other saints in heaven. Because they have laid down their lives for the Lord, the Lord gives them some extra privileges. Normal people like us, we cannot go to the place where the martyrs dwell. So then how could this little boy be there? So I asked the Lord, Lord, what about that boy? And the Lord said, he is also a martyr. I said, how? The Lord told me, when the police, communist police came to arrest the mother and the father, they were pastors. The little boy held on to the mother's skirt and he wouldn't let her go. And he was crying fervently, mommy don't go, mommy don't go. Then he went and held the feet, the leg of the police officer and said, please don't catch my mommy and don't catch my daddy. He held on to the leg as hard as he could and he cried fervently. And the police officer was wriggling his leg and asking the boy, let me go, let me go, let me go. And the boy wouldn't let go. In a fit of anger, he kicked the boy. And you know this police officers, like the military men, they wear very thick boots. And the front portion of the boot has got some metal parts made into it, you know. It struck the jaws of the boy. His jaw broke into two. And the force of the kick flew him across and his head dashed against the wall and he broke into two. And the Lord said, this is how the little boy died. He's my martyr. Just like his parents, my martyr. Little ones. There's a little company of martyrs. So we should prepare our children to be prophets and martyrs for the Lord, for the coming move of God. Can we do that? Are you willing? Let us stand up for a word of prayer. But please be assured, it's not a very painful thing to die as a martyr. Many people are very scared about being a martyr. But the martyrs, like others, unlike others, as unique as their call is, they don't actually taste death, you know. It's just like an ant bite. And before you can really taste the pain, the spirit is already out of the body. So you can see your body being tortured, being burned at, on the stakes, or being fried in a boiling oil. It's the body, but not the spirit. It's already, it's already out. The Lord takes it out. At the moment, there's little tinge, ant bite. Is ant bite painful? Not the evil ant, you know. The good ant. Not that red hot end that really stings you, not that one. The good end that sometimes bites you. That little tinge, end bite. You know that term end bite, right? You all are great saints. Just that end bite and your spirit is out. So don't be afraid. Oh, my child will go through this pain, go through then. Those are lies from the devil, all right? It is so glorious. The numbers of the martyrs must needs to be fulfilled. That's what the Bible says, right? You have read it. I do not know why it is important, it is necessary, but if the Bible says so, we believe it. Amen. That settles it. Amen? Amen? Oh, great king of the whole universe, we come before your holy presence in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ this evening. Holy Father, I have communicated to your people the things that you revealed to me this morning and this evening. And your children have received it, Lord. And even all those who will hear this through the audio CDs. Prepare them 
that they may be followers and leaders in this last days and time army of God. And I also pray, teach them, Lord, how to prepare the babies and thoughtless for the coming great move of the Holy Spirit, for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the babies and upon the thoughtless. Teach them, Lord, how we should prepare them because they are also going to be your great company of prophets. Teach them, Lord, how we should teach the babies and the thoughtless how to praise and worship the great king. As I am praying this prayer, I see right now a huge gigantic scroll, a sealed scroll just towards my right. That is as huge as the ceiling. From the floor, it is right up to the ceiling. This scroll has is been placed here. And when this church truly seeks the Lord concerning how you should train the children, there are messages in the scroll, patterns, protocols, strategies, teaching ideas, teaching curriculum, all in the scroll. The seal will be broken and it will be revealed to this church. In this church, if you truly seek the Lord with all your heart, put away your old ideas, your old methods of evangelism towards children, your old methods of teaching aids to children, Put away all that. I see the Lord Jesus Christ standing before me right now. Come to me, my children. Learn of me. For I am meek and lowly. And if you humble yourself, putting away all that you know, I will teach you the ways of my kingdom. Teach you the ways of God's kingdom for the children. And when you sincerely and desperately seek the Lord for that, I see several angels, at least three of them, specifically appointed for the unveiling of the things in the scroll for the children's ministry. These angels will help you to develop, to develop the curriculum, to develop books, teaching aids and then people from all over the US will come to partake in what the Lord has revealed. This will become like an oasis for those true seekers of the Lord to come and drink water those who are truly thirsty, they are dry and thirsty, they will come. And the Lord is seeking for truly dedicated followers, disciples who are willing to do what the Master commands. Is there any among you 
whom I shall count worthy of double honor to receive disgrace. Come before the Lord with fasting and prayer and seek His face. The time is short. But the mysteries and secrets of God will be made known soon. Thank you, wonderful God. Holy God, thank you for your merciful kindness to make your thoughts, your ways known to us. As the word you have spoken are in the, have been mixed with the atmosphere that is in this church, I pray your word that is now in this place. Those who truly seek will breathe that atmosphere and they will breathe your word in into their spirits. And your word will then, that anointed word, the word that carries your will, your plans, and your purposes will become them and they will know your wills, your purposes, and your plans. And I commit all these wonderful saints of this church and even our wonderful friends who have come from outside lot. I commit every one of them into your loving embrace. Embrace every one of them to your bosom. I pray that every one of them who are in this church and who will hear this message through this audio series will become worthy to receive this grace. That we may prepare your army for your coming Lord. Especially our little ones, the babies, the children, the thoughtless, for your coming, the last day's army, as your prophets and as your martyrs. Thank you, wonderful God. If this prayer bears witness in your heart, please kneel down. Let your heart bow down before the great king who is standing before us. Bowing down the attitude of consecration, dedication and giving allegiance to the king. Even many among you this prophetic anointing is going to come upon you in a new manner. And you will take this powerful last day's anointing to many, many nations. You will prophesy. Especially, I see you, my dear brother Jack. This anointing is going to come very powerfully upon you. You have been traveling the nations unassume, unrecognized, and you never sought for all of them. The Lord will trust you with this anointing. Just like John ate the little scroll, you will be given the little scroll to eat, and then you will prophesy to many peoples, many nations, many languages, and many kings. Through you, it will be multiplied Manifold to 
to all those whom you train. Thank you, wonderful God. I see many sorts been given to many people in this place right now. The sorts look about two feet in length. They all been positioned to be given. He who has ears to hear and he who has heart to open to receive will receive. Holy God, O great master of the end time powers and our great king, we bow our hearts, we bow our minds, and we bend our knees before your holiness. You are our Lord, you are our God, and you are our soon coming great king. Unto you shall all flesh kneel and bow. Unto you shall all tongues confess that the Lord Yeshua, he is Lord. And there is no other but him alone. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Yeshua. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. You are a good God. Your grace and mercy endures forever and ever. Shall we all just lift up our holy hands and bless the Lord our God with all our hearts, with all our souls, and with all that is within us, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless.